Mr. Broker, <laughs> I'm working as a realtor already 14 years. In the beginning, my career was not that tough. Uh, now, uh, last, like I said, four or five years, uh, I see a lot of foreclosure, short sales. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely, um, and unfortunately, that's that's the, dire the direction that the market is going into. Um, I myself am involved in many short sales, um, and I think that that's an ex excellent solution actually to a problem. And the problem being that people are not uh, are not able to afford mortgages that they once could afford. And a lot of times, this is just the primary problem that they're having. So, for example, a short sale is an excellent solution to that problem. Um, and what it is is basically um, if, a, if a borrower can't afford to make those payments and he's trying to sell it or get rid of the property, um, you can submit an offer to the bank that's even lower or less than what the amount owed is on the property. And uh, the nice thing about it is that now, uh, more frequently, lenders are accepting those offers, and um, these borrowers are able to get the burden of these great mortgages off of them. And the nice thing about it is also, um, if it's a principal residence, there are no tax consequences to that forgiveness of debt. So it, it's an excellent solution. It, it's a lot of it, it's actually a, a large proportion of the activity that's on the market right now. So many of the sales that are going on are short sales, unfortunately, or there are purchases of bank-owned or foreclosed properties that have already gone through the process. As a realtor, <laughs> when I talk to my clients, they think short sale is going to be quick <laughs> sale. I said, no, no, no. Short sale doesn't mean that uh, not going to last a long time. Usually, uh, it's much longer than regular sale. Correct. And uh, when I'm looking at uh, some problems that they're facing right now, I, I see that uh, a lot of people don't understand that equity cannot always go up. They were assuming, uh, like say when they were buying four or five years ago, I said, are you sure you can pay that? Are you sure you can make those payments on time? Why don't you take a uh, conventional loan? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, why don't you take a let's just fixed loan? You know, but they were g doing arms and now a lot of people got in big trouble. Oh, absolutely. It was definitely an overconfidence um, that, you know, that property values were going to indefinitely skyrocket, that they were going to um, appreciate, uh, real estate was going to appreciate in value maybe in the double digits on an annual basis. It was an unfounded um, optimism. I don't want to call it a hysteria, but um, there was a frenzied activity um, where, in, as you probably remember, in 2005, um, offers were being submitted for list or above list price. There were bidding wars for properties going on at that time. And of course, financing was very hard, was very easy to come by. Um, people were financing up to 100% of the purchase prices, as you know, and were putting a lot of their own money at stake. So um, it was a matter of, you know, uh, un unfounded and un undue optimism. Although nobody, I don't think, could have foreseen what would happen at that time. Um, and, and the market really fell out from under everybody and everybody was talking about a bubble, but I don't think anybody would have, um, th you know, the premonition of what, what was going to come, which, is a com which was almost a complete collapse of, of, of the market. Let's talk about banks. Like, uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, lately they accept a short sale easier than before. Yes. And they, I guess, they got the message that if they go for closure, they're going to lose minimum 50000 more. And basically, the clients, if they really have a real hardship, uh, they're going to probably go for bankruptcy. Absolutely. Um, initially, even a couple of years ago, it was really, really frustrating um, if I were representing a seller who was trying to do a short sale. The number one problem was that the process took so long that ultimately the buyers would get frustrated and just not continue. Uh, it was too hard. And for somebody who wants to buy a house to move into and to live in, they don't want to wait three, four, five months to get an answer on whether or not they're going to, whether the lender, the seller's lender, is going to accept their purchase price or their offer. So that was the most frustrating thing uh, for me as an attorney and representing these sellers um, who had a perfect opportunity to get this burden off of them, and the bank had a perfect opportunity to get rid of an asset, a non-performing asset, but it wouldn't go. But luckily and fortunately, even though it's not as simple as a regular purchase, um, it's, it's definitely been streamlined and it's become more effective, and the period of time is much shorter. So it's still worth it if buyers are looking for um, a particular property or a particular area, they can get a wonderful deal. Um, and I'm not saying it's easy, but it's much, much simpler, more streamlined than it used to be. Mm -hmm.